Hello everyone, today I'm going to talk about the traditional wife. There's been quite a buzz lately about the traditional wife and there's a growing movement called the trad wife movement and it was started by this young lady I think in TikTok or Instagram where she started wearing these beautiful aprons and started showing herself making these meals from scratch, taking care of her home, taking care of her husband and she talked about how her dream since she was a child was to be a traditional wife and as soon as she met the man who became her husband that's exactly what she did she wasn't worried about you know finishing a, a degree and she started inspiring more and more women in this trad wife movement and there's more young women who are jumping in um and following suit and i think it's beautiful that this movement is growing because really this whole idea of moms working outside of the home and not being the center anymore is actually pretty new to humanity and it's probably only happened for the last 50 years. And so let's talk about the stats a little bit. In the 1900s, 95% of women stayed home. And I'm thinking that that 5% was probably a uh, woman who lost her husbands or whose husbands couldn't work and it was not looked at something positive it was actually like oh that's sad she has to go to work you know in the 1950s 85 percent of women stayed home in the 1970s now there was a spike 48 percent of women stayed home um today 25 percent of women stay home and it has been a spike of 15%, so it was lower than that, after the pandemic. So it's up to 25% today. So this whole uh, movement of women working outside and not being the center of the homes is actually relatively new. And it's a social experiment because for most of humanity, the woman has been the center of her home. And there's other stats also that are really interesting and really alarming as well because since the 1950s, there's other things that have happened as well. Suicide has tripled for young children, for youth and for adults. Obesity has tripled and you already know what has happened to mental health and depression and anxiety. It is epidemic these days. And so we need to ask ourselves, why? Why is this happening? Why is our society collapsing? And it's not just for one reason, but, you know, there's got to be multiple factors. But one of the factors, I believe, is that, you know, we don't have women at the center of the home anymore, cooking wholesome meals, tending to their kids like they're supposed to be. Mothers are supposed to be raising their children, not someone else. Not a daycare, not a grandparent. Mothers are supposed to be raising their kids so they can raise healthy, strong, confident children. And so when you talk about stay-at-home mom, like when you introduce yourself as a stay-at-home mom, there's a stigma there and the conversation goes whoop, way down because there's a judgment there and, and it's, oh, here's a person who's, not doing anything productive with their life. They're wasting their lives away. They're subservient to their husbands. Uh, they're lazy. They're whatever else that people think about stay-at-home moms. And that's the reason that this, this is so. It's because society places value. The value of a human being is placed on how much they can produce. How much money they can produce. We live in a capitalist society, in a consumerism-driven society, where what you produce gives you value. And so if you hear of someone introduce themselves, you know, they have a certain degree, they have a certain title, they have a certain position in a company, they've climbed up the corporate ladder, that's prestigious. That's a value. But we really need to ask ourselves, what does it mean to have value? What provides value to a human being? And what I think provides value to a human being is to live out their humanity, to live out the role of a woman, to live out 
the role of a mother to step into motherhood and actually experience it. To step in as a wife and actually experience it. Um, and you know, stay-at-home mothers, traditional wives, they have a huge impact on society. They are raising the next generation. And, and that's huge. That's important. I wanted to take a quick moment and tell you about my private community, Bloom Sisters. This is a private community of moms worldwide where I bring you into my home and I share with you my routines, my cleaning schedule, my meal plans. I'm even teaching the moms how to make bread from scratch all the things so if you're walking into this journey of motherhood and homemaking and homeschooling i walk with you side by side teaching you the things that i have learned the last 12 years in this journey if you would like to join me i will place a link in the bottom of the video in the description box if you would like to join hope to see you there bye bye i have been a traditional wife for 12 years Prior to this, I was working uh, as a finance person in a government agency, very high paying job, and I was working in a cubicle. And I spent like nine hours a day there, low light, high stress, very restricted. Um, and when I compare my life as this traditional wife that I am today, it doesn't compare in value. It's, it's just so much more beautiful and fulfilling for me to be at home. I remember when I worked in a cubicle, I wish that I would see more light, would see more nature. Um, especially in the winter time, I'd get off of work and it was dark already and I would come home and it was already dark outside. I was tired many nights. I would just uh, go to sleep until the next day. I was so tired. And now my life is so different as a traditional wife. I get to go outdoors with my children. I get to do gardening and bake together and go to the library and go for walks and see all the little moments that I get to experience. All of the firsts that my children um, do, like their first words, when they first learn to read, uh, all the little things, I get to experience it. I read a stat the other day that said that by the time your children are 12, um, you have already spent 75% of the time that you're going to spend with them. 75% of the time that you will have spent with them is over by the age of 12. And that's a huge stat, right? Because children grow up so fast. And the ability to be able to enjoy motherhood and to actually live out motherhood it's truly beautiful instead of having someone else do that for us. I remember when I first left, some of my coworkers said, um, well, I would never give up my six-figure job to stay at home. There's just no way. Another mom said, as soon as my baby was a month old, I put her in, in a daycare. I couldn't wait to be back to work. And so you see where people place value in here. Um, but think about this. Someone else is getting to experience this beautiful baby, this motherhood. And I remember my friend would tell me, I get reports for my baby every day from daycare. I don't get to miss it. Um, so they would give her a report and they would tell her how many books they've read that day, um, how many songs they sang, how many times the baby smiled, how, what the baby did. The first uh, the things that the kid, the child did that day that were new, um, and they got a report. That's what they got. They got a report. They didn't get to see it. They didn't get to experience it. And I really believe there's true value in experiencing motherhood, which is which flies, and it goes by so so fast. And I am just really excited and inspired that there is a trad wife movement going on. And I, I have four daughters and I want nothing more for them that when they have their children, that they're going to be these traditional wives that I taught them to be, that they're going to raise their children, that they're going to take good care of their husbands. I am so excited for them. And, you know, when you think about like, well, what about a career? What about a degree? And... 
There's nothing wrong with going to college and being educated and going to get a degree. And only because you go and you study something doesn't mean you can't come home and doesn't mean that that's never going to serve you. Um, you know, I have a bachelor's degree and I use it. I use it with the work that I do. Now at home, I am a children's book writer. I write curriculum for children and books and, and I use the the work that I went to school for I use it and that's another thing that I think a lot of women think that when they come home that they're just gonna be living these um, insignificant lives where they don't get to produce any money they don't get to do anything important and they don't get to have any recognition for what they do and while it's true that you might not get recognition you don't need the recognition. You need to know it for yourself. And also know that a lot of traditional wives, they have these side jigs. They, they, they do a lot, you know. And so I know a lot of moms who, they, um, they're bakers. They sell their baked goods. Some of them are soap makers. Some of them sell their handicrafts that they crochet or that they sew. Some of them um, run Amazon businesses, they run Etsy businesses, they run uh, all types of businesses on the side. Some of them clean homes for a living. There's so many things. So when you do come home, it's not like you don't ever have to do anything with your life that you can do. Yes, of course you can do things to produce money. Just as long as it's not going to uh, take over your main role because what you're home for is to be there raising your kids and serving your husband, right? Let's talk about this serving, this servitude, right? Because we talk about how these traditional wives are subservient to their husbands. Well, if you think about it, you know, working mothers, they're subservient to their bosses and um, they're serving someone. You're always serving someone and you're always obeying someone and always under someone. And when you are working for your boss, that's exactly what you're doing. And he, and they can fire you whenever they want. There is this false sense of security that when you're at work, um, it's you're better off when you're at work. And that's not really how it is. Granted, if you're going to be a traditional wife, you need a good husband. That's a believer that is under God that values a woman, um, but. You know that's some that's that's very very important and there's also different types of stay-at-home moms because I just want to say that only because you stay at home doesn't mean that you are a traditional wife there are moms that stay home that they're on Facebook and Instagram and doing whatever else all day they have their kids in front of a screen and they're really absent from their homes they're so absent from their homes that the working mothers spend more time with their kids when they get back from work. So when you are a stay-at-home mom, when you're a traditional wife, you're going to fight for your schedule and you're going to run your home with a certain level of professionalism. Like, that's what I do. And that's what I did when I came home and I left my job. I created cleaning uh, schedules and meal plans and I use my time properly because I knew that I couldn't waste my time at home so that's really important and you know not everyone is going to have this privilege of staying home not everyone is gonna have it there's the single mothers out there that I highly respect and value I grew up and was raised by a single mom who sometimes had to work two jobs to sustain us and I know how hard it is I know how hard it is. There's also the uh, the stay-at-home dads who, for whatever reason, have to stay at home and take care of their kids. There's the uh, the two working parents who have to work to maintain their households. We live in a high-cost society now, and not everyone is able to do it. But there are many that can. And I remember when I first left that I had to make some sacrifices. I had this, I sold my car. We had one car now. We moved from a uh, two bedroom, two bath uh, luxurious apartment to a one bedroom simple apartment until we paid off our debt and saved money. And we kept growing from there. It takes some sacrifices and it takes 
uh, just leaving some things behind that are not going to serve us and that are not, it, it takes setting priorities so that we know what's really truly important in our lives and what's really going to be of impact. Because you see, moms that go to work, you're making a lot of money, right? But what are you doing with that money? Are you, you have a whole collection of purses and of shoes and a big closet and a big home, but what about you? Are you happy doing what you do? Are you truly living out your motherhood? Um, that's something to ask yourselves. I had a neighbor that told me that her daughter, when she asked her daughter, what do you want to do when you grow up? And she says, I want to be a stay-at-home mom. And that's her dream as well. And I just want to tell you all, if you have a daughter that tells you that, just honor that because there will be children very young. That, that, that's what they aspire to. And don't kill their dreams because it is a worthy career. It's truly a career to be a traditional wife. And it is prestigious to be able to raise the next generation. It is a value. And I wish not, nothing more than that society would change and shift their view of what it means to be a traditional wife and that it would be looked as something of value and that we can go back to the time when women stayed home. When women were the centers of their home, they were taking care of their children, loving on their children, loving on their husbands. And as I said before, we still have stay-at-home moms that are not the traditional wife. And they complain that they're home and they complain about the work that they have to do, not knowing that it's a privilege. They complain that they have to serve their husbands a warm meal when their husband comes back from work, from working a tough day. And the feminist movement has really blurred things for people and has attacked the traditional wife movement. And a lot of it is just fear-based and it's backward thinking where they say, well, a woman shouldn't have to rely on a man. But that is what marriage is. Marriage is a reliance. It's an interreliance where a man relies on his wife to take care of him, to make him his meals, to take care of the home. And the wife relies on the husband to bring money, to help buy the things that she's cooking with. Um, and it's a beautiful interreliance. So yes, it's okay to rely on a man. And yes, men, it's okay to rely on your wives. It's okay. And that is actually how the animal kingdom works out there. There isn't like this species that relies on itself and they do all the things and they're somehow able to survive out there. In fact, species, they rely on their flock, they rely on their herds to protect them. And there is an order. And the ones that break off, they are endangered from being eaten by a predator. And I talked about it in my last video where there's roles, right? And, you know, the queen ant can't just say, you know what, I'm going to decide that I don't want to lay eggs anymore, even though that's her role. Because then guess what? Her colony is going to cease to exist. And, and, and animals in, in the animal kingdom, they don't decide to switch their roles around and to stop doing what they were by nature meant to do. And um, if they do, they threaten their own species. And I believe that we as a society have gotten to a point where we are threatening our own species by reversing roles and by defining what a woman and what a man is. We are threatening our own species. It's beautiful to be a woman. It's beautiful to embrace femininity. It's beautiful to be a traditional wife. It's a career. It's prestigious. Just change the way that you look at it. And things will change. I, I encourage any of you out there, if you are a working mother and you can afford it, and you can do it, and you can maybe downsize or maybe you can let go of certain things that you don't need to have in your life, 
to come back to the home, to come back to the center, to come back and put that apron on, that apron of love, and come back home and serve your children, serve your husbands, serve humanity. I encourage all of you who can do it, and I guarantee you, you will be fulfilled. You will love what you do if you do it right and you do it from the heart. And if you fight for your schedule and if you do it in an organized way, you will love what you do and you will never regret it. And you will look back and you will see all the beautiful memories that you made with your children. I sometimes, I look back because I create these albums with me and my kids and I just sometimes like tears start rolling down my eyes because I'm like, this is so beautiful, so beautiful that I get to make these memories with my kids. And you know, I didn't grow up in that type of household. And I didn't get to experience all those things with my mother. And I now I have the gift to be able to experience it with my children. And I am in awe of this privilege and of this opportunity i hope that you have enjoyed this video and that it has inspired you whether you're young you're old or whatever you are you don't even have to have kids to want to be a traditional wife it is worthy it is beautiful it is it has an impact it is prestigious and you will not regret doing it I hope that you have enjoyed this video and I'll see you all in the next video. Bye-bye.